Hello, uh, hello. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Nerd Ledger. We are the nerds. I'm Cage. That's Chair. This is my dog, Chase. He's um, uh, Chase. Yeah, he didn't want to. He's not viciously threatening my life because there is uh, 40 miles between him and I. Well. But whenever I come over to visit Cage and I come in the spirit of friendship, he sticks his dog on me. He just tries I... to viciously destroy my shoes. I think in the future he won't do that. I, we, we've we've worked with him, you know. He's better Good. now. He's much better now. So, yeah. Anyway, if you're not watching um, live or on YouTube, you won't see the dog, but he's here. He's here. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, there's a lot, there's a whole bunch of shit we have to talk about. Um, tons of news. Well, tons and tons of news. It's uh, it, it's easy to get through to be honest, but um, we'll just kind of go through it a little at a time but but pretty quickly because you know there's not a whole lot to say about some of it but um yeah so i'm like, ready to go yeah the 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 big i mean the most relevant news stuff kind of popped yesterday and it's all really just rumors um but and and uh, i did tell you that so the the the, the biggest one is that Pedro Pascal has apparently been cast as Reed Richards, a.k.a. Mr. Fantastic, in the Fantastic Four movie. And um, that's the one I, I think has the most credence to it. But mm. um, I'll explain why in a second. Because there's other news that came from, like, like one of the sources for this news is a website called Slash Film. And they got it from an insider, which I hate insiders. Um, and, uh, and they also reported that Kevin Feige, before Pedro Pascal was cast, made a comment that the Fantastic Four cast was too white. <laughs> I don't believe that shit at all. <laughs> I don't believe that shit at all. The same uh, site also reported that Silver Surfer was going to be in the movie and uh be gender swap so it would be a girl silver surfer and not norn rad silver surfer i don't believe that one really either um mm. those two sound like something that gets announced just to like make people mad and the first one i believe more about pedro pascal because it was also reported by legitimate sites such as deadline and the hollywood reporter who also said they were hearing that from their insiders Right. So there's like the, a difference between a, a person on Twitter who's a quote unquote insider saying something, which also happened with this. Yeah, then, I, I, that, that, that you taught me to think like that, too. Like whenever I see like a oh, Hollywood insider, like I'm back on X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it, because it is a really good place to genuinely be informed. Right. Like you get the news as soon as it happens, essentially. Sure. And, and like sometimes the news just happens to be on Twitter. And uh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. And it, but either way, like whenever now that you like, oh, the insider says, but when I saw Pedro Pascal said, oh, in final and final contract negotiations with Marvel Studios, I was like, oh, that sounds really serious, actually. So, or what? I think all people really need f for me to paint my picture of why I don't trust insiders. It, it's twofold. One, anybody can say an insider told me, right? Just to mm -hmm. get clicks. But two. If you look at the whole saga of this Fantastic Four casting thing, we've had like four people that Marvel was for sure casting as Mr. Fantastic. We've had Adam Driver. We've had mother sucking all these other people. I don't remember all the names, but like there was a bunch of names. Even John Krasinski coming back was, was rumored, right? And so you get all these rumors. And the thing about rumors is there's hints of truth in rumors where like someone at one point may have said, Hey, John Krasinski, he was really good in, in Multiverse of Madness. We can bring him back. Like, that's an yeah. idea. That's And then people release that. And, and what they do is they put the headline, Marvel considering <laughs> John Krasinski as Mr. Fantastic in the MCU. And people run away with that as he's going to be cast. And they did the same thing with Adam Driver to the point where it was announced that he was for sure going to be cast. And that didn't happen as well. And again, he may, uh, you know, there was a part of this report was also like Jamie Dornan and some other guy also uh, auditioned and test screened for the role, but they didn't test screen well, so they they didn't get it. But if Pedro Pascal hadn't been announced, when, when was the rumor going to come out that they were Marvel's considering Jamie Dornan as Mr. Fent, right? Like, 
there's truth <clears throat> to rumors, but it makes people believe it's done. And so even with this one with Pedro Pascal, it could fall through. Anything could happen. Like, it, you yeah. know, and the thing That's is true. with Pedro Pascal is he's in everything. <laughs> he was in uh, Wonder Woman 84. He was, he's in The Last of Us. He's in The Mandalorian. Like, this guy's everywhere all the time. He's always doing shit. But and he's then, also really good in those things. So there's a caveat no, no. to that. Like, yeah, no, I'm not saying yeah. he's bad. What I'm saying is... Does he just There's apply a point where he, for everything? Does he audition for everything, or do people seek him out? I think people. I think in this case, he's, he's like, all right, dude. I, I think that Disney is really stupid. Like again, these executives don't know what they're doing anymore. That's very plainly obvious to anyone who yeah, like, like Pedro has Pascal's a brain. hot with the kids. Exactly. No, that's exactly the meaning. Like, oh, you know, Pedro Pascal is really popular and he polls really well. Like, that's a, that's like the boomer thing to do. Is like, oh, let's look at a poll and see what a poll says, even though you, oh, the polls are inaccurate now because you're asking one hundred thousand people in a country of four hundred million. That's like not accurate at all. Well, anybody who knows <laughs> anything about statistics knows that that surveys and polls are pretty, bullshit, pretty dude. Much right. Like in the modern age, they are. I feel like we honestly these days we could do some really good polling if we wanted to, but not everybody wants to get a text message to their phone at the same time. So, yeah, you I mean, know, you, like, could, you could eliminate bias and whatever, but you're not really in that case. Like, there's there's non-response oh, you bias. Eliminate... There's, there's undercover bias. There's biases everywhere. Yeah, or you, but also we have this thing called the National Text Alert Hotline, which means that the tech, you know, you can send a text message to every phone in the country. So you could definitely start polling people like that if you really wanted to know what everybody genuinely thought, right? Um, like that's like that's something that's you could. That's a good that's way to get a random sample, but yeah, you have to roll. <laughs> I mean, you, you could easily then say there's bias because. The people most prone to responding are these kinds of people and, yeah. you know, et cetera, et cetera. Right? I don't know. If you just ask, like, a simple yes, no question, too, that's the thing. Like, you have to just ask, like, a very direct, simple Most people simple will question. assume that it's a phishing scam and they won't respond. <laughs> yeah, that's that is also true. So. Or, like, or uh, how many people, I want to put, how many people responded, fuck off. <laughs> yeah. That would be my favorite. That would be my favorite Eat statistic. my ass. Pretty much. Um, so. But any, anyway, though, so you, you regardless of the, all that weird stuff aside, you know, I think that he just... Yeah, I think he's having his moment. Like Oscar Isaac is kind of having his own little moment right now, you know. Bro, it's and funny uh, you say that because Oscar Isaac would actually be a decent pick for Mister Fantastic. You know what? Older, I thought more chiseled I, one. I thought that exact same thing. I was like, oh, wait, they could do Oscar Isaac. I was like, oh wait, he was in fucking Moon Knight. Never mind. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, so the, the, he's he's locked out basically is what that means. Like, and and that sucks. And I, I started combing through my brain, but I just don't think of anyone else off the top of my head that could. Uh, and then, and then my next, the third, that's when I texted you that text. I was like, dude, they should just, they should just stick with John Kinsey. He, he was great. Like he has, like he sounds really smart when he talks, and I think that's the most important part. And I, okay, I don't know the Fantastic Four comments, but from what you've told me, <clears throat> Reed Richards is like super duper smart. Like that's his whole thing. Well, like, yeah, I mean, that's just him and Victor are the smartest people in, in Marvel comics. Yeah. I mean, smarter than Iron Man by a long than shot. Hank like him. Yeah. I mean, yeah, these are like yeah. the geniuses of, of the MCU or not the MCU, yep. but Marvel comics. So, yep. it, of the Avengers or the, they're geniuses of the Avengers. Like, you know, the smart like, guy, the Avenger um, smart guys. It's the, Pedro Pascal, like he could do well. I just, I don't even know if he's tall enough. Like Mr. Fantastic needs to be <laughs> at least, relatively just, tall though right i just think that pedro pascal his problem is that he looks too old and gruff and when i think of reed reed richards i think of someone who's a, like middle-aged like i don't think old like you know with well, you a either, beard you either need the beard that john krasinski had or you need mm -hmm. to be clean shaven for the movie yeah and i don't know if he can grow a proper beard i think he's patchy kind of like you know everybody else um and uh, honestly I don't. I don't have that much concern about them figuring out the look. I think they could get the look, how fine, however they do it. The yeah, they could definitely. They could definitely do a lot of aesthetic work, like you know, like your uh, your buddy Captain Hot Sauce says. Uh, you know, they can make anyone look like anyone these days with this makeup shit. Yeah, honestly, like it wouldn't bother me at all if Pedro Pascal is Mister Fantastic because I think he could take the role and do something with it. Like he's just he's just very good at what he does. Um. You know, and and whether it's like just the nuance of acting as the Mandalorian, where like you can't even mm -hmm. see his face most, like almost all the time, and like yeah. the weight he can carry, like through that, but also like his roles in you know the char charisma he had as Oberyn Martell and in Game of Thrones, and yep. you know he, he's that's right. That's where for most people probably first saw Pedro Pascal like on the screen was him yeah. and Oberyn Martell. The first time I saw him was in <clears throat> the Vampire Slayer. 
Yeah, well, I didn't watch Buffy, but my my sister probably saw him. He was in one I did episode that. for like uh, like thirty seconds. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Classic, dude. I miss those days. How did they make those episodes so good? Like, there's some like I love that Merlin. Dear, what did you watch Merlin? That, I watched uh, show like, it... the first season of Merlin. Yeah. I loved Merlin, bro. I love that show so yeah, much. It was, it was like on my BBC, right? Yeah, yeah, and it didn't do very well, which sucks. No. But you know. but it had like four seasons or something, didn't it? It did, and it wrapped up a really good, intense story, which I really, I'm glad they were able to do that. It felt a little rushed at times, but it also I mean, feel like I mean, the CGI you know, wasn't very good, but I still thought the dragon was cool. Yeah, the dragon. Yeah, having a dragon under the castle is a cool idea, and like you know, the whole magic being outlawed is a new twist. Anyway, all that aside, yeah. Anyway, I don't he know. could he could play that guy could play really good. Um, Reed Richards. What's that guy who plays Merlin? Who play? He's uh he's in a lot. He's uh he was Nux in Mad Max. You know who I'm talking about, though, right? He was Tolkien in the Tolkien biopic. Oh, Nicholas Holt. Yes, him. Do you he, think he could be the root? He was Beast in the X Men movies. The, oh shit! The, the newer ones. Never mind. So he was the one walking around in the Marvels trailer and the no, Marvels no, no. uh no, post credit. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. And, and also, uh, we haven't got there yet. That's a spoiler okay, alert. Got, That's got a spoiler it. alert thing. I'm oh yeah, saying. spoiler alert. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, but no. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm sure he he could do fine, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if this even happens, and if it does, then um, you know, just got to put your faith in in their casting choices. Hopefully, so I don't have faith in Disney. Though. That's my pro- that's the problem these days, bro. Well, kinda, it's Disney, hard, hard I don't press. think has faith in itself. Yeah, um, and I think that's where it comes from. Like, I feel like they're they're like this is the first time Disney is really fucked up in like a really major way. It's obvious that like you know that something is going wrong, like because. The movie that we're going to eventually talk about was obviously a lot better than you would see in media. But I think the reasons that the media reflection, like, you know, that the online media anyway, and how people react to it in general. But I think that that information is more informed by um, fatigue. I think they're tired of these movies yeah. and that they don't want to watch them anymore. And they're misprojecting their feelings. It's a couple yeah, it's a couple sure. things. Yeah, a couple things. We'll talk about it if we talk about that movie yeah. tonight. And, and there... we got a lot there is a, a larger problem with the MCU and it, and, and I don't know where it stems from. It's something that I've observed and, and I believe I don't, I mean, I could be wrong about it, but, but it has to do with the connectedness of things. Yeah. And the expectations of fans. Like those two things are major. And I don't, I don't know if we, we have the time to really flesh that out right now. Um, but all I'll say is some projects seem like they should be relevant and they're not and that makes fans angry because they feel like everything should have a meaning and everything should be important and everything should be relevant whereas other fans feel like things should stand alone and you shouldn't have to watch 30 movies to understand the one that you want to watch and so i don't i don't know people need to decide what they actually want i i I personally think that you should have elements of interconnectedness because it's a shared world but you shouldn't have to watch everything to understand one thing yeah, so, so you see, for, like, me, I know what I want. Like, I want them to hit the reset button in the most cleanest way that they can. Like, you know, the, the old was totally destroyed, and now we're on to the new. Well, this, is, know? this is something... Or in, in however way they can do that. That's, like, is... satisfying for the story, because I know, like, the heroes are supposed to win, so they can't, like, just have a situation where they all just fucking die, obviously. Uh, or <laughs> but, could they? Could they? Yeah, you know, I wish. Well... So so we'll we'll get to it. We'll get to the to the Marvels, but the the one thing I'll say now about it is you had people who saw it and then said, "So I didn't need to watch Miss Marvel or Secret Invasion." Like and they're mad about that. And I think that's a good thing. <laughs> I think it's a good thing yeah. you didn't have to watch those projects to get the movie because then it's more accessible to everybody. Like and and it doesn't make those projects irrelevant. It doesn't make them yeah. bad or not important. I, I... I do have something to say about that because well, I feel like that you do n- you do not need to watch Miss Marvel to enjoy to watch this movie, but I do feel like it helps. Well, of course, like, and that's that's yeah. the brilliance of of an MCU done right is you don't mm. need to watch another project to get the project you want to watch, but those who did watch it will gain something, but the people who didn't mm. won't lose anything. Mm. right like that's the balance you want but you, do you think that the people that are there that don't know feel like that they might have a sense of fomo of missing out well if they do they can go watch it you know oh. like 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 yeah. if, if you go see the marvels or yeah and then you're like oh i i'm interested more about kamala khan you can just go watch miss marvel and decide you know if 
that's something that you care about or not, right? Like that's mm. that's the thing about comic books. Comic books have had this problem for for years and years and years. People don't know where to start, and that's where the MCU is now. People don't know where to start. They 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 want they're like, do I have to start at the beginning? Motherfucker, ain't nobody gonna read thousands of comics starting in 1962 to understand the full story of fucking Spider Man, right? Yeah. You're gonna Wikipedia some shit, or you're gonna say you're gonna talk to someone at a comic book store that says, here's a good place to jump in. Right, and where you're jumping in isn't going to be the beginning. Where you're jumping in isn't going to tell you everything about the character and their origin and everything else. It's going to tell you who the character is now, the story they're a part of now, and where you're jumping off from. That's all it's going to tell you. And yeah, that I think that's all you have to do, <laughs> right? Like, and a movie done right will explain the things that need to be explained, and you you shouldn't feel lost because you know there's a TV show about this character that you haven't watched yet. Mm-hmm. So we'll get there. We'll get there. But uh, we'll get there. I'll speed run through the rest of this news. So first of all, we talked about those rumors. Uh, Marvel also uh, reportedly is moving away from Jonathan Majors Kang. Um, again, this is another kind of rumor, but it's substantiated by the fact that the writer of the project, Jeff Loveness, who wrote Quantumania, he was supposed to write the Kang Dynasty. He's been removed from the project, right? So that's a big thing. The second thing mm-hmm. is, even more recently, uh, Daniel Destin, Destin Daniel Cretton, whatever the fuck his name is, was supposed to direct it. He directed Shang-Chi. He is exiting the project to focus on Shang-Chi 2, 2 and Wonder Man. And so mm-hmm. what's going to happen? Who knows? Is it going to still be the Kang Dynasty? Who knows? Uh, something that we'll talk about when we talk about Loki is... Anything's possible. He was because he was really good in Loki, man. And it sucks. I was thinking that last night when I was watching. Well, he was very it, good in uh, Quantum Mania as well. He's a fantastic yeah. actor. He's just a, yeah, most likely a scummy person. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. It sucks that those two things are commonly paired together. Yeah. So, <sighs> um, in addition to that, um, something we didn't talk about before uh, is the Marvel Spotlight banner. This is a new banner that Marvel's releasing certain projects under, including Echo and Wonder Man. And it's supposed to be like, you don't necessarily need to know all the canon to watch the things, which I feel like everything should be like that, so it's kind of weird. Um, mm. But the Echo trailer did come out. I don't think we talked about it at all. Um, mm. It's 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 violent. It's going to be like the first TVMA project for Disney. It's going to be simultaneously released on Hulu and Disney+. Plus. Uh, it looks fantastic. Every episode comes out in the same day in January. Um, and so hopefully, hopefully that's cool. And it opens the door for more things to come in the future. Um, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that before I speed around the rest of this. No. Okay. Uh, actor strike is over. We talked about it last week as it happened. Mm -hmm. Um, and the MCU, uh, or Disney has released some new dates for their upcoming MCU projects. Deadpool three was supposed to be May 3rd. It's coming out July 26th. Now next year. Captain America Brave New World. It's getting a bunch of reshoots. It was supposed to come out July 26th. It's now coming out February 14th, 2025. Uh, Blade was supposed to come out February 14th, 2025. It's been pushed to November 7th, 2025. And Thunderbolts was supposed to come out December 2024. And it's being pushed back to July 25th of 2025. And Blade Blade seems like it has a whole host of issues in addition to, like, you know, being suspended because of the strike. (laughs) Yeah, you are correct. We'll see what happens with Blade. I hope it comes out because that guy, what's his name, uh, who's playing Blade is, is awesome. Is an awesome actor. Mahashala Ali. Something yeah. Like that. Wasn't um, he um in Daredevil? Or he was it... in Blue Cage. He played Blue Cage. That's uh, right. That's right. Uh, it wasn't Diamondback. He played the other guy, the club owner guy. Yeah. He was really good, but he was really good in that. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That first that dude that first season Blue Cage was hella good. Yeah. It was indeed. Um, and then there are a couple trailers that came out. Sony's Madam Web trailer, Spider-Man, Spider-Verse kind of movie. Uh, I don't know if anybody cares about Madam Web at all. Uh, the only character I care about in the movie is Julia Carpenter, who becomes Madam Web in the future, future, future after um, Cassandra. But th- this movie's not about that. She's Arachna, a.k.a. Spider-Girl, one of many Spider-Girls in the movie, or Spider-Woman, whatever you want to call her. To me, she's Arachna. Uh, that's how I know her. Um and i hate her costume i fucking hate it you can see her whole <laughs> fucking face man they, why don't they put the fucking eye lenses man wait you're talking about the the trailer for spider silk right or whatever that was madam spider web. girl madam web. madam web dude people that i'm still on reddit i shouldn't be on reddit people, reddit, people that, think the movie looks great i hate the costumes like the costumes reddit themselves is, look good where are the eye lenses yo reddit is a great place to go and read 
go and mine some salt, bro. Like it is a nonstop salt mine, like in Mahler and all these other reddits. Like I just see them, read them all the time. These people are so irrationally angry. Like there's a whole yeah. subreddit. They're probably there's mad sub- because it's, it's women. And then there's like women of color in it as well. And it's like, there's no men, uh, main that, characters, like, but villain's I don't know, a man. Like, right? They say the, you know, and plus like, you know, I've seen some pictures of like, you know, her suit sometimes like they say, oh, it's not tight enough or like, oh, they don't want to make it sexy enough. Yeah. And like, I'm just, bro, like, they didn't, they barely showed the suits and the suits are plenty tight and the suits themselves look good. The masks, you can see their full fucking yeah. face. There's no secret identity. Where are the eye lenses? And they, and to like the whole like the hate women thing is just all out in the open now. They're just like, well, seventy five percent of the people who watch these movies are men, so maybe they should just figure it out. And I'm like, so you're just saying you don't want female actors? That's what you're saying. You're saying, you're like, saying they don't want them yes, to try to get like <laughs> half of the world's population to go see their movie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's so it's so Jeez. dumb, bro. Like all these arguments and just watching yeah. this all the time, it, it, it's really funny to watch. Yeah. Regardless, though. Um, I mean that's uh, all the news. Yeah. Aside from there okay. was also a Last Airbender trailer, uh, but I didn't. Wasn't, I didn't watch. There it. wasn't much in it. I mean, you get yeah, to see like how certain characters looked, and that's about it. I like the Last Airbender, but damn, some people like love that show. <laughs> like it was really good, but Bro, it's the, it's it's the emergence of fandom to an extreme, and and that's how fandoms are. Like, and they come and go. They come and go. Like people mm-hmm. hop on what's hot because they want to be accepted and feel loved. Yeah, like, and whatever. like with like with digital circus and stuff like that. Like not just. I mean, bro, K-pop, Taylor Swift, mm-hmm. like like Swifties oh, and I, K-pop no, I, fans. I like, don't know about Taylor Swift. I think you may be underestimating the fact that there's like a bunch of girls that really really like no, Taylor no, no, Swift no. because don't they get, get drunk wrong. and they sing about like you know breaking up with their boyfriends and stuff. Like I really do feel like that she's like the Michael Jackson of our generation. <laughs> And like you know, what did Michael Jackson sing about? Like having a good time and dancing. And like you no, know. no, don't get me wrong. Like she, she, she has earned her fans. Yeah. But like they haven't. Like you have to understand, Taylor Swift's been around for like fifteen years or more. Definitely more. Like seven, almost twenty years. She's been making music, and she didn't always have this amount of fandom, right? So this is the emergence of fandom to an extreme. And in addition to that, like it's it's real i mean her her fans are are crazy yeah well they'll get all but, like look how the k-pop fans up, are also crazy and extremely yeah, racist. look how dressed up they get for taylor Co- like taylor for taylor concerts it's crazy like it's awesome i, I love mean, it um, people can't d- doubt at all the Im- impact that taylor swift has i mean the nfl is in love with taylor swift they they, they she is making them so much money yeah she is making them money like you have to understand the, the nfl they don't they they're like the most watched thing in in the usa like they don't necessarily need it, but like nobody watched these random Chiefs games that weren't prime time. Like they saw huge spikes because Taylor Swift was there. Taylor Swift's there. Everybody's watching it. Hmm. Like it's crazy. Yeah, and like, I heard it that the movies when for her uh, her her concert yeah, her, were really her Eras tour like m- you know got released as a movie in in cinemas Cold. and one box office every weekend <laughs> isn't that crazy dude that's so wild and like you see like the pictures and they were having such a good time and they were just chilling and like freaking uh singing and dancing and stuff yeah man so. it's like um anyway like we're, we're, not, we're, not, a taylor, we're not a taylor swift podcast though so we, we probably should get off this like we're probably destroying like what, what a little credibility is male nerds we have left <laughs> yeah, I mean. all right yeah anyway Moving so, on. Uh, what yeah. do you want to review first, Loki right. or the Marvels? We'll talk about Loki. About first. We'll talk All about right, it. let's talk about Loki. Well, let's talk about the last. Specifically, let's just talk about the last episode of Loki and how nothing else mattered and how we didn't need to watch. Okay, spoiler alert one. Uh, because yeah. you know it's impossible. I'll let you talk. Occasion. I'm gonna bring my dog out real quick. Okay. Uh, so uh, I kind of need Cage's like opinion to bounce back off of. That's how I kind of like work. That's how I make this whole thing work. And with him gone, it really makes it really difficult for me to generate content on my own because I'm not streaming a link the game I might be playing right now, and then I would just be talking about what I'm doing in the game. But now the Cage is gone. Uh, I don't know what to talk about because. Uh, he's back. He's gonna come back. Please come back. Oh god, it's a fucking disaster. Oh my fucking god, everything's on fire. It's a disaster. Please come back. Okay, he's here. Okay, he's here. All right. Did, so, back. did something burn down? No, everything, everything's fine. Anyway, though, uh, Loki, spoilers alert. Um, what did you think of the last episode? Um, overall, do you think that the rest? Do you think that they could have just released Loki season two and then just put out the last episode and then all right, that's it? And you would be like, wow, this was amazing. <laughs> I mean, it's what we've said since the beginning. This whole thing could have been done in like two hours. Yeah, um, in a movie, and even in a movie. Yeah. So 
a lot of things a lot of things happen in this episode i mean from the the marvel intro being played in reverse because you know time um yep the the conversations that loki had in this episode were really intriguing both with mobius um mm. and with he who remains it was um, probably the best the best like dialogue probably of the of both season one and two it's yeah just, uh, yeah really good stuff the thing is i'm very curious if by the way, I don't know if you said this, but we're, there's going to be spoilers here, guys. I spoilers. Already, so yeah, I've, I've said spoilers like four or five times. Yeah, It's yeah. impossible for Cage and I to talk about content without spoiling it. So if you don't like being spoiled, just tune out now. Yeah. Also, I forgot to update the title, so I'm going to do that right now. But yeah. my, my real question is, um, you know, things like Game of Thrones... Um, I know you, you disagree with the Sopranos thing. I don't know, but like things oh, like that oh, the where, ending are oh, the ending the ending of sopranos yeah where I, people... I don't disagree that the ending was bad but i just don't think that the sopranos couldn't like it ended in any way that would have been satisfying for everybody that because everybody loves the sopranos for uniquely different reasons like i love the sopranos because i think it's a very clever and probably the best like portrayal of modern american family life that, that we've had to date probably you know it's about how like just distant and disconnected everybody kind of is and like you know how everyone's always kind of angry a little bit all the time and stuff like that and you know and anyway though but that's that's kind of like my opinion on like the sopranos ending um but right go ahead so um people what people say is like um jesus what people say often is like the endings of the sopranos and game of thrones ruin the whole series mm -hmm. well game well, game of thrones is just objectively bad though so you know it's... right but that's that's like the common that's not the common even the thing. same that's not even the same like i don't know i'm sorry but like that's not even like the same degree like at least the sopranos All was right. fucking amazing right up until All the right. end like the fucking... well well leave leave the sopranos out of it right game okay, of thrones thank you. the ending room was... right that's what people yeah, say that, yeah the last two seasons no, not even the ending the season the last season as a whole ruined it right right, right. <laughs> but my question to you is does the does the season finale of Loki season 2 save the season? No. Like are you expecting me to are you expect me to just like go in there and rip it apart like that like just go no. Like no, I, no, no. when I was I, I mean okay, I, I didn't expect yeah. you to think it saved it, but it's an interesting question in general because if if the ending of something can be so bad that it makes all the good things about the series tainted for you, I'm just wondering if just the end of something can be so good that it makes the rest of it seem not as bad. Or sometimes it has the opposite effect where you watch that. This is what I think happened to you is you watch this and you go, this was great, but why the fuck did I need to watch five other hours of this shit that didn't do anything? Yeah, there were nothing mattered, and like the whole power of friendship doesn't fucking matter, and none of that matters, and Loki's just gonna the, be alone the anyway. Doesn't matter. None of it matters. Dude, none of it matters. Like it's all just a you know the Kang plot, like because Kang is like doing things with has plans within plans within plans, and yeah. you know again. And and the thing is, it's a great. So, when what I like to think about with stuff like that is this is what did this season accomplish? Yeah, what it accomplished is. It gave Loki a very good arc. It gave him a purpose. It gave him a thing to do. It, sh it it made him better, right? He sacrificed everything he cared about to save and give freedom and choice to everybody, which is like his whole story kind of coming full circle. And, mm. and there's so much depth to that that yes. that's really great. The problem is the whole season other than that is completely irrelevant because we end in the same spot we ended after season one, thinking that there are infinite possibilities with infinite branching timelines and anything can happen. That's what we yeah. all thought after season one. And if there was never a season two, they could have kept that going, kept expanding the timelines, because all He Who Remains said is, if you kill me, the timelines will branch and all my variants will, will come out and it'll be a time war or whatever. He didn't say yeah. the loom will stop it from happening and keep all this stuff and blah, blah, blah. You know, obviously, because if he did, then we wouldn't have the interesting conversation we had in this episode. The problem yeah. is, as viewers, we understood branching timelines infinite possibilities and season two all it did is say 
Just kidding, you can't have those things because Kang built in fail safes. Ha 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 ha. And now yeah. we're gonna do this weird shit where we have infinite fucking uh, 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 looping of shit. We have uh, uh, the the infinite time glitch, you know what I'm saying? Like, everyone's turning to spaghetti for some reason. <laughs> Loki, be, Loki can just go back in time as far as he wants to get the result he wants. And yep. become a fucking Which, genius way, that, in physics was, and science and all sorts of shit. That was driving me fucking insane, by the way. I hope you know, like, if you were thinking me, like, wow, chair must really hate this because of all the time travel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was going fucking insane. Like, dude, you're just solving all your problems with time travel. You wrote yourself into a corner. You're like, okay, let's see. Uh, now I need him to do this. So he went back in time and he solved all of his problems. Okay, now I'm going to do this. Okay, now he goes back in time and solves all his problems. Bro, like, you, know you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of, like, a video game where you're fighting the boss and you just keep dying and resetting. Yeah, pretty much. Like, that's and what this episode was. And, like... Even... And, and that's why I hate... You know, this is why I hate time stuff, like, as like as a thematic element, like, in, in creative works because you can do whatever you want. Like, you know, the whole idea is that, like, you know, you're trying to give the viewers some sort of like some feeling of risk or of reward loss like you know you want them to be engaged and that's a really good way to do it and, also they had us know, believe in he would he would kill sylvie Motherfucker. yeah we knew he wasn't gonna kill sylvie and sylvie they're, are the sacred timeline Motherfucker. they freaking edged us the entire time with that stuff bro so stupid the thing is like i saw some complaints and I don't, I don't know if they're even relevant. Like, people were mad because, like, they're like, oh, like, Sylvie, like, was sidelined this season. And, like, what, like, it seemed like they didn't know what to do with her character. And, and I think part of that is true. But I think part of it is also, like, uh, that it's not her show. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know what you want me to say. Like, it's just, it's just not her show. I mean, Mobius in that case was also very sidelined this season. Like, yeah. he didn't actively do anything in this season. Yeah, he was actively useless. Pretty other much. other than around. the conversation that Loki had with the past At version the very of himself. Yeah. yeah, like he was just running around, he was just running around being like, hey guys, it's me, Owen Wilson. <laughs> he didn't go do anything yeah. like at all. Like Again, the entire TVA as a whole was pretty much sidelined. Yeah, and so essentially where we end up is Mobius leaves the TVA to go yep. live his boring, shitty life with his asshole children. And uh, Loki... Uh, becomes he who remains in a way and uh, is sitting at the end of time uh, with all these branches around him and for people who don't know this is essentially the world tree this is yggdrasil uh, mm -hmm. and in in lore it's it's the tree of life that binds the nine realms together in 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 uh, scandinavian lore and marvel uh thor norse lore. Yeah. yeah norse mythology and stuff like that yeah. like the world tree that's i knew what it was like when i saw it because like i played a i played a you know uh god of war god of war ragnar yeah god of war and like one of the ways you transfer around is you yeah between the realms right yeah yeah and then i mean it was mentioned in the first thor movie we also saw it on a door in the first captain america movie when red skull was trying to find the tesseract um mm -hmm. So it's it's been present in in the MCU before, but uh, now I mean it is it is uh, I mean Loki is at the center. Uh, he is at the end of time, sitting all alone on his little throne. Uh, mm -hmm. You know he's finally got his throne. He's finally a king of something or nothing. Um, yeah. Yeah. No. It's it's and got all these threads, and that was like cool stuff. And yeah, in the transformation, yeah, you know, like classic costume, like all that's mm -hmm. really cool. Um, and I'm, I'm happy for Tom Hiddleston and I'm happy for the evolution of this story or at least yeah. Loki's story. Um, the, the biggest things that get brought up and again, I'll, I'll repeat the thing I don't like is essentially you don't accomplish anything as far mm -hmm. as like the MCU. Well, I don't lore. think, I, I don't think that's specifically true. Like, I think this sets the stage for the Kang variants, like, you know, doing, getting up to like goofy stuff. That's sure, what I but think we had that before. I mean, yeah, we but saw I, we saw a Kang variant and but in, I think they're trying to the, Quantumania. Yeah, but I think what they're trying to say is that they're like you know trying to make it a little bit more of a pronounced threat is what they're going for. That's just my vibe. Like I don't know, I could be wrong, but I feel like they were trying to set up more Kang stuff. It's entirely um, possible that, we don't see Kang ever again, though. Yeah, I know, and that's like the bad part because Jonathan Majors. Uh, I don't know what's going on with him because you know 
there's a lot of court stuff going out there that he like assaults women and there are a lot of people out there in Hollywood that really don't like working with him because they say he's like a really angry individual that like you know comes close to assaulting them and you know he he's, he everything he says is like just for me as someone who worked in law uh, complete and total lawyer speech and so I you know it, it, there's a lot of weird things going on here that are not good that do the point to very bad science you know of patterns that I've recognized before oh, yeah. um so with all of that being said uh he was really really good in this in this in loki like as he not as victor timely but as he who remains in this episode was really really good like yeah. it was some awesome some awesome stuff the freaking conversation was a little cringe at times um especially when loki's like oh I, how many times have we had this conversation before um you know, I, I yeah, I, I feel like that's something that King would be able to pick up on that he like actually Loki could actually pause time, but also it's, but also at the same time, ha, ha. um, ha. you know, it, it it was still really good. It was really good stuff all around from both of them. It was like really intense. It was really personal. It was really deep. I loved it. Yeah, and and um, again, it's like it's great for his character for Tom Hiddleston's character, right? Mm-hmm. And that's like. I'm I'm happy with the season overall. I, I still have the yeah. same complaints. Like, it, we could have just had a two-hour movie. Do you want to know? Yeah, yes, that is the thing that always comes back to is like the first season of Loki was like really good. So they could have just you know kept the original Loki as like a really good episode, like the original they, no the original stuff as a good a good first part of a movie, and then just expanded this stuff in the back end and like you know maybe made mix miss minutes of like breakdown a little more edgy or something like that or just. Um, make it all jonathan made like you know like, that it was always he who remains was always in control of the tva that's like because he made it that's like his idea they they should have uh, just done what they do with werewolf by night like they that's mm-hmm. what they should do for all these mcu series in the future like just make it a short like hour and a half movie yeah and exactly tell the tales you need to tell because again people will complain they're like bro i gotta watch six hours of this show to understand the MCU moving forward, and hopefully that's not the case, but maybe. Yeah, I, I, feel, I feel like Loki is one of the more important ones because it was WandaVision, and then it was Loki season one, right? Yeah, but people feel like, like WandaVision isn't relevant either because they think Doctor Strange 2 either explained everything it needed to or went against actively what was in <laughs> a WandaVision, one, right? Yeah. I mean, so did you even need that, right? Like, it... And I don't. I'm not the kind of person who thinks like, oh, it's it's not needed, so it's not good. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, even if none of these shows actually end up mattering at all, like they have their own value by themselves. Um, whether it's they're they're good, enjoyable things, or whether you think they're garbage, terrible things. Um, but but it's got to frustrate fans who are like, bro, I watched Moon Knight, and what the fuck? Like, nothing's ever come of that. You know, I'm 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 watching all these yeah. things. I'm I'm spending all this time, and I didn't need to. I didn't need to do this. And and on top of that, I've been watching thirty fucking movies. And whereas you know, like, bro, you you didn't even have an Avengers movie in Phase Four to cap anything. Mm. Like, you know, like we had we had Avengers ending Phase One. We had Avengers Age of Ultron in Phase Two, which it didn't end Phase Two because Ant Man ended Phase Two. We had uh, you know End Game and Infinity War in Phase Three followed by far from home and then we jumped into phase four and i've had no avengers movie yeah right and now we're in phase five are we in phase five i have no idea homie (laughs) i'm just along for the ride (laughs) like all this phase stuff is i always thought it was personally i thought it was always kind of dumb like you know and you just kind of make movies and you're trying to tell a consistent story over time like and contribute to a greater universe which is something you know sure that's great that's awesome uh, but also at the same time, you know, like what's going on now is where you can get really stuck in the weeds. Yeah. Or again, where people are just, I, th- I just genuinely think people are getting burnt out on this content. Like, I, think I that's definitely why the, think fatigue I think is why the a Marvel's, major aspect. I think that's why the Marvel's underperformed because I like, it, I just think, I, I, I just I think people partially. are tired of going, people are, people aren't going to go see like, you know, superhero movies if they think it's going to be bad. And then like, you know, gets all this fake bad press because of angry boys on the internet yeah um so I and mean, then well, and then so people definitely don't want to go watch it so uh, we'll wrap up loki real quick all i'll say is i i enjoyed most of the season um mm-hmm. and i think that that the finale despite the fact that like in canon 
Loki was like two weeks ago trying to destroy New York with the Chitari. Uh, he grew mm-hmm. a lot in that amount of time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think I think the finale was good. I don't think it saves the whole season for people, especially people like you who like it just irritates and like they're just well, using some t- of these episodes, time for yeah these episodes some of these episodes are pointless they were just like meaning meaningless distractions and filled you with fake boring content that didn't really need to be done and there was no reason for it and like the whole miss menace thing was pointless everything's oh, yeah. pointless oh, also ren like... slayer ren slayer was pointless and she ends up in the void at the end the void with, that was that the, with the big cloud that consumes everything yeah, and she's like gonna get eight and stuff, and that's like how her story ends. And like you know, and I don't know. Yeah, so. I think that, but I the thing like too, like they said, like you know how they set up in Agents of Shield, how they had that hidden helicarrier. I think that the, what they're setting up for whatever's coming next for Kang is that they are hidden, like the hidden TVA, like the TVA is gonna come out somewhere, and um, well, and help help the heroes when something happens. Maybe, maybe, but. We'll talk about Miss uh, the Marvels now. The Marvels, guys, the Marvels. So, uh, spoiler warning for the Marvels. If you haven't seen it, we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna say all the spoilers. Um, all the spoilers. And back to your point, uh, superhero fatigue does play a part in the box office for this movie because the box office is not great. I mean, it, it won the weekend or whatever, but um, it's the lowest opening for any Marvel movie ever which does suggest that there's some superhero fatigue. But the other thing people forget is there was a, uh, a writer's and actor strike going on for a long time. This movie didn't get mm. promoted. They, they didn't have a press run. No, uh, no, it did not. And, and like, and you know, there's people, no con, there's no like merch at Disneyland. That's what people are saying that that really confuses them. There's like nothing at Disneyland. Like, you know, when they did guardians of the galaxy three, like there was this whole thing. And, yeah, but they weren't able to because of the they like you know Brie Larson wasn't able to go on talk shows late at night with her co-stars and talk about the movie and tell you go mm-hmm. see this movie and all this stuff. Which honestly, it, it does work. I mean, that's why people do it. People spend millions of dollars on marketing to get people yeah. in seats at theaters, and when you can't do that, it's going to affect your box office a little bit. Um, yeah, and it's something that all these articles fail to mention, and something that people who claim that nobody wants to see it because it's woke garbage and it's all women and and diversity and and Marvel's wokeness is coming back to bite them and all this garbage like it has nothing to do with it at all. Those people also yeah. haven't seen the movie because literally every single person, if you read comment sections, every single person who's seen the movie liked it. Yeah, <laughs> like overwhelmingly. The, the, there's. I'll talk about what I didn't like about the movie because it takes me two seconds. The villain was a cookie cutter villain. That's it. That's the only yeah. bad thing. And it's, Dude, can it's, I be honest? Can I be honest with you? Yeah. She wasn't really like, quote unquote, like the villain. Like she was just like the plot device. <laughs> like I don't know. That, right. That, that's that's the, all I can describe. Like yeah, she was the, just the, like a representative of the anger of the Cree people. Like, the you know, antagonist really... of this story is more or less Carol Danvers. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and her mistake, her, and, uh, it's her mistakes coming back to Hunter. Right. Like, they don't have to defeat the villain. I mean, the villain defeats herself. They yeah. have to overcome their differences. They have to overcome uh, their powers intermingling. They have to overcome. Carol has to overcome her past. Yeah. Um, and that's really what this story is about. And, and unfortunately, though. Darben is the villain, and people are gonna be mad because Darben in comics is a dude, and they gender swapped. Oh my god, guys, they made Darben a, a girl. Um, mm. I I don't think she was bad. I just don't think that there's any real relevance or significance to the villain in the story, right? She just helps yeah, well, the plot I, move forward. Um, exactly, like, and she's know, also just... Tom Hiddleston's wife. Oh wow, really? Yes, lucky lucky guy. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, uh, I was trying not to sweat too much of this movie, man. Man, wow, there's a lot. Of, I like these outfits. He's good. <laughs> like, good. Never mind. I'll try to keep that on the back burner. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But but I mean the that, that's all that's all I could say that was bad about the movie. I mean it was an it was a fun movie. It was it was funny. It was great. Like there's nothing like world breaking. Like oh my god, this movie you know changes everything. Well, I mean there's something. Yeah. But before the mid credits, before the post credits, all that shit. And I can't say mid credits. It's before the credits. There's a oh, pre credit scene. There was a post credit. Oh, I thought I thought there no, wasn't. So I no, left because I had a no, pee no, 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 so bad. Sorry. Let okay. me rephrase this. 
There's a okay. pre-credit scene and a mid-credit scene. Okay. Um, and before either of those, the film is fantastic. Yeah. So, like, those things just are what they should be, little bonuses at the end. Yep. Um, but the movie's great. I had a lot of fun. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I had a lot of I fun despite it. the fact that Chair... I don't blame you for this. You got sick, so you couldn't come. I got sick. Right? Yeah, and I, I don't have many friends. I was friends. like sick as fuck. I didn't, even volu- I didn't even volunteer. So I, I always have a backup, right? So I, what? Well, not a backup, but essentially what I do is I buy three tickets. Chair's <laughs> always one of them. And then this other <laughs> dumb fuck that we know uh, is always the other one. <laughs> is he and calling this, yet? Is he called in? Uh, not today. He called me earlier today. And he, call, he called me yesterday. And I told him I'm getting ready for a concert. And he called me while I was at the fucking concert. I didn't answer. Like, what the fuck are you calling me for? Probably to tell yeah. me that Pedro Pascal's rumors are being cast in Ring Richards. Yeah, you probably know um, probably what it was. Which I already know. <laughs> so uh yeah. but yeah, and so he he called me that day, the day of the day of the Marvels. He called me at two PM when I'm at work and I didn't answer. I was like, dude, what the fuck is this guy calling me for? I'm at work. He called yeah, me send a send he, a text I'm like a well, he, does, he doesn't he doesn't have a phone. Oh that's he can't right. text. And he's banned on all social media, so he can't send me a DM. <laughs> um <laughs> Because he's a dumb fuck. And so he called me at like 4 o'clock when I was at the gym. And he was like, eh, sorry, buddy. I, I I can't go. I'm I'm too tired. I just started this new job. I'm like, what the f-? I was like, I was like, all right. Like, so I guess I guess I got no one to fucking go with. And he's like, he's like, oh, don't be mad at me. I was like, bro, I'm not mad. Like, it's like, I understand. Like, this is like shit happens. But like, you know, it's yeah, just like yeah, annoying. It so does my, suck like that I said about it. I was so sick. <laughs> yeah, my wife ended up going with me though, and she had Good. she enjoyed it. And, oh, God, I'm sure she must. She, she would have loved it. Like everybody can watch. If you can't watch the movie, not have a good time. Like I don't know, there's something wrong with you. That's yeah. all I gotta say. Yeah, it's, just, like, it's, it's a very fun, enjoyable movie. Um, yeah, some of the intense scenes are really intense. Like they leave like there's so basically what's going on is is that Captain Marvel. Was there a scene where she went back and cap in in Cap Marvel and fought, fought the Supreme Intelligence? Was that something that I missed? Well, she no. Yes, she goes okay. she goes back, and she. Is that I, a scene like, that actually happened? Yeah, though? like is that something that was like on screen on in Cap Marvel? Yeah, remember because the because her mentor person was like the Supreme Intelligence, oh, okay. and like she fought her like inside the thingy. You remember he kind, kind of and then like she defeated um, it and then yeah so that that did happen yeah yeah but even um, if it didn't they explained it here so yeah so uh, and basically um she went back in the Cree and then the Cree who are like you know the religious race that go around like en- enslaving a bunch of other alien species they um yeah they're like great britain but of space yeah yeah they have like a huge civil war because like they were ruled by this ai that one of the war- them were to worship it as a god and um you know, there was a huge, and they had like a uh, Captain Marvel destroyed it, and they blew up their world like in the Civil War. Like the oceans have been burned away. There is no oxygen. There's no air. Uh, there's no water. Uh, there's no. St- their star is dying. Presum- yeah, I, I don't know why. Dying. Presumably, yeah. they built they built too many solar panels or something and drained too much of the sun. Um. Yeah. So you know, I, I don't know. And uh, so everything's going wrong. <laughs> they're not having. A, they're they are not what I would be calling having a good time. Um, so they decide to go steal those resources from other planets. And like you know, Captain Marvel's like, all right, I got to stop these guys. And then the enter the Captain Marvel Echo and Captain Marvel and uh, not, and Miss Marvel. Not, not my Echo. Fault. Not, I, uh, not echo. Uh, uh, I don't remember the name they give her in this, but but in comics she's Spectrum. She's a Spectrum. A Spectrum. Um, in Spectrum. Yeah. yeah. So Spectrum and so Spectrum, uh, Captain Marvel and Miss Marvel all go on like you know a little fun little camp campy little adventure in space. Uh, they have like they're all exposed to like some weird energy field at the same time because they all have light powers. Um, so uh, they switch places randomly when they use their powers, which is really cool. And, like it's a cool mechanic. It is really it, it's fun to watch. Like you know it, it's moderately entertaining. Like oh they're gonna and I just knew like oh they're gonna have to do a little montage where they freaking team. I already pre- I predicted that montage was coming. Like the, oh they're gonna have to or they're, all right guys we gotta learn how to use this thing to our advantage instead of looking like a bunch of dumb fucking idiots. Yeah. Um. But the the first scenes are really uh the the opening sequences are really great though like the the fight the fight sequences are great man like so, yeah yeah. Uh, yeah. So what? Oh, also the what other thing it? I think some people okay. maybe didn't like was the the singing bit. Oh, see, that's the thing. Like, I loved it because I knew they were doing that just to fucking piss people. Yeah. Off. 
Yeah. I knew no, they, were doing it, they were doing it to get the K pop girls excited and uh No, I don't make I don't think mad. they're I don't think they were doing it to get K pop girls excited. I think they were doing it exclusively just to piss you like, all right, let's see. Uh we got the full woman cast. Uh let's see, let's see, let's see diversity check. All right, like, let's see what we do next. All right, let's add a singing <laughs> section to just piss all these dudes off. Jesus. I didn't think it was um, bad. And I, like a... I love, no, I love that part. That was like one of my favorite parts, actually, because I'm like a sucker for musicals. So, like, you know, and I thought it was awesome. Yeah, it was really good. It was well, it was well and, done. Is that in the comics? Is it like an actual thing? Uh, honestly, I don't know. <laughs> Prob- I wish I could probably? tell you. I don't know. Yeah, it's probably yeah. a thing, um, but I, I don't know. But yeah, it's it is interesting and like, uh, <laughs> it's funny. Like, I don't know. It, it made me laugh when. Uh, when like they tried to sing to the prince and like and you're like oh he speaks English he's bilingual <laughs> yeah, he's bilingual he can speak like I was like oh <laughs> but she still does that quick dance really fast where like you know she switches in the Captain Marvel dress and yeah. like they do a little dance yeah that's cool uh, I don't know I liked it yeah I liked it I I loved it dude and they were yeah. like fighting the Kree like they have these like they still have like warriors and stuff and like they're all singing when they were fighting and. <laughs> Oh, God, yeah. when they first landed, and then she just said, yeah, they talked through singing. I, like, literally almost clapped my hands. I was so excited. I was like, all right, this is going to be those. F- this is going to be fantastic. Yeah, I do wonder, for people who saw Secret Invasion, how confused they were to see a planet with scrolls on it. Yeah. And they're like, why couldn't the other scrolls just go there? Probably, but, like, we don't yeah. know when this takes place, necessarily. Like, maybe, maybe they just started inhabiting that place. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like that's that's my conclusion, and and it makes it even more sad because like they have to leave right away, and so yeah. but but they found him a home with with on uh, new new in new, new Asgard, so. new Asgard. So now they got all these guys going on here. Yeah. So I mean, it does make the while, Secret Invasion seem even more fucking pointless, though. Yes, it does. There's no doubt about that. Um, but all the while, Samuel L. Jackson is is just here. <laughs> yeah, people. I think I there was some complaints that like. We didn't see, they're like, well, we saw him go through all this stuff and have all this intense acting or whatever, and we didn't see any hints of that. We don't know where the fuck his wife is. Like, what the fuck is going on? I'm like, again, it's not his movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like He's just a, he's just organizing whatever this, like, you know, space bridge thing is. I don't know what that stuff is. Like, that new organization they're making Saber. where they're going to Saber. Like, is that, like, the Marvel, is that what happens in the comics? Is, like, Saber is, like, a real thing? Saber's a real thing, yeah. Okay. So yeah, cause I I don't know anything about it. Like I knew about the Avengers, but I never knew about like Saber or any of the other organizations or anything like that. Oh, there's a bunch of organizations: Hammer, Saber, Shield. <laughs> I knew about the Hydra. Sentinels because I used to I used to play them in um Street Fighter and Mar- in Capcom versus Street Fighter. Mm. Uh, they have a they have a Sentinel character. Yeah. So. so you had um when I saw the movie, you had asked me like how it was and stuff, and I said yeah. I could understand why people maybe wouldn't like it. And yeah. what, what I meant by that is, I think for some people, um, Kamala Khan can be extremely annoying. Yeah. I don't find her annoying. I but find her charming. But I, I, but I also, yeah I, yeah, I did too. Like, you know, I think she's just like, you know, a teenage girl. And yeah. She does that But I can really understand well. it's like, for some people, it can be cringe or just like really annoying. But also, she like, well, that's kind of a weird thing to say, but like I'm saying this as, a, as someone who appreciates acting, but like when she's like under a threat, dude, like she puts the puts out the child desperate cry scream very well. You know, like yeah. you feel bad, you feel bad for her when she's put in difficult situations, you know. Yeah, but she overcomes, you know, she. Yep, exactly. That's yeah. the idea. And, and like, like she, she is the embodiment of this fandom, to be honest. Like, yeah, that, that's how all, you know, extreme Marvel fans are like, they, they yeah, like, oh, I wish I could go on adventure, adventure with my favorite heroes. Like, yeah. hell yeah, bro. Writing fanfic, exactly. Like, you know, yep. but like. And I appreciate that they like also like include her family because like it's such a big part of her character and so yeah and her family's funny too <laughs> yeah like, and with Samuel L. Jackson was fantastic that whole sequence on like the space station with the cat was great uh, like all them, the cats so what... dude the, the, the <laughs> yeah I love was, that that shit was great I, that shit was when they were running around like just let them eat you and like the music <laughs> slowly playing and like everyone was like it's like I'm not gonna let them eat you what do you mean let it eat me <laughs> like yeah. Just, Oh, that was fantastic, bro! I love that so much. Yeah. Oh. And, so, but so what? So they're switching places, and like, what? Ha- they all get up in the hijinks. Basically, this free character needs to get stopped, and like, you know, so Captain Marvel's off fighting the Kree because she's Captain Marvel. She's like defender of the universe or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and then like the Kree, like she gets to a fight with them, and then she switches places with like Kamala Khan. I don't remember how. They, how do they end up on Earth again? Because like they're on the light bubble, right, or something. 
they're touching her when they get transported. Is that how it happens? How do those Kree get into her, the family's like bedroom? Because that's when they first like all really meet. Oh yeah, they were because like, they were like yeah they were touching her or something. Yeah, yeah. or so or, or something. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And uh, so the Kree and then they save Kamala Khan. They're, obviously, because they're like you know heroes and good people, they um save Kamala Khan's family, and that's how they all meet. And yeah, yeah, they and then they all get off their house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just like their house is annihilated. Um, and so they head off into space to go save the day. Um, you know, stop, stop the Kree lady, and you know, stop and they stop on a scroll planet. Like if you don't remember the scrolls are, they're the shape shifting aliens from the one show. What's that? Uh, well, they're Inhumans. From, they're from Captain no, Marvel, <laughs> and then they were no, the one, the, the one that featured them, the Se- Agent Eight, the Secret Invasion, Secret Invasion, yeah, yeah, dude, but... that was Secret Invasion. Oh my god, Boy, yeah, that and so and that's bad. the other thing is like, again, like Secret Invasion is kind of like the opposite example of this, but it's like it, it almost takes away from this if you've seen it because you you get confused like, well, what the fuck, right? And then, yeah. but whereas like Miss Marvel, like Miss Marvel doesn't detract anything. Like not having seen it doesn't take anything away from the movie. They explain her powers, they explain who she is very well. Um, mm. But if you do watch Miss Marvel, like it's just a nice, fun show that you can watch in addition to it. Yeah, well, unless you didn't like. But. If you're me and you're just a miserable, crouched old man, and you hate everything. Miss Marvel, maybe, hey, maybe in small doses in a movie, it's great. But like you know, a uh, seven-hour show, uh, maybe it's like it's the peppiness eventually just gets to you, cracks you like an egg, and you're just like, I hate this. <laughs> I mm-hmm. hate feeling happy. I hate good positive feelings associated with family. Oh. Well, there's a lot of bad feelings associated <laughs> with family in the show too. That too. But you know they solve they solve these associations and that everybody feels good about them. everyone's feeling big good after uh, so I guess but yeah I mean with the Marvels um yeah that I mean essentially the villain is just trying to steal resources from other planets to yeah. save her planet and, and so, it's so all, they're okay it's and the, all the annihilator's yeah, fault yeah so they're getting up to these these hijinks and uh, they learn they have the fun little montage where they team up and learn how to use the power. Spectrum is awesome. The lady who plays Spectrum is awesome. She's very, you know, she's like the group mom almost. <laughs> I don't yeah. know how else to describe Despite it. Despite the fact um, that Carol's like 20-something years older than her. Yeah. Or 30 you know, years Carol, older than her. Carol's like an awkward soul. I really like how, really like the Brie Larson acting glow up because, you know, like I didn't really I like Brie Larson. Well in this one. I th- it, in the first Captain Marvel, I thought she was really stiff. I saw, like, yeah. okay, she's going for, like, the wounded soldier thing, but she came across as, like, talking to a brick house, which is not she how it's supposed to be. She was going for the wounded soldier, but also, like, the fish out of water thing. Yeah. Where, and like... in, this one, in this one, it's a lot better. Like, way better. Like, yeah. much, much better. And uh, I really, so I, I really enjoyed her performance in this. Like, you know, she's stiff like a, like someone who fights too much is, like, you know, and doesn't really, like, think about, like, emotions and those other things. Like, you know, I've just got to go fight and solve the problem. And it's like, you know, just good chemistry all around. And then Kamala Khan's there the entire time. Remember them. Hey, guys, remember we need to be peppy and awesome and happy. And we're all best super friends. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and and Monica's just so overall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Spectrum does not want to be there. She doesn't want to nickname or anything like that. Um, yeah. But it's funny. But uh, so they go. So what happens next is like, so the there's a scroll planet and it's like got a lot of oxygen or something, I guess. Or maybe they just fucking hate the scroll so much. Like, all right, we're going to fucking we enslaved you for a gajillion years. And now we're going to steal your oxygen because we fucking hate you. You pieces of shit. We hope well, you die. It seems <laughs> like they wanted to like have like a have, resource, have a treaty or something like yeah, have some to, kind of negotiation. To share the world with the Kree or something or with the yeah. scrolls. But the scrolls are like, nah, we're good. And then Captain Marvel showed up, and they're like, oh no, she destroyed our home world. Fuck you guys. We're gonna open yeah. a portal and steal everything from you. We're gonna steal your oxygen, you know, yeah. with this bangle we got, and they yeah. steal the oxygen. And, and then, you know, and then like Kamala learns the reality of being a hero isn't just yep. saving everybody. And yeah. So what what he's talk what he's talking about is there's basically like they start the giant like wormhole that starts stealing oxygen opens up above this like city and like you know come all like they're all getting on rescue ships and fleeing and stuff like that and kamal is trying to like rescue people and it's like a horrible situation and again the lady who plays kamala khan is like really good like oh fuck like she looked that emotion that that sent that look of uh, being emotionally overwhelmed she delivers it very well um so she's a great actor yeah and uh 
they're getting on evacuation ships and like they're on the last ship and there's still hella people like running away from the collapsing building and then Captain Marvel's like we're full go and then Kamal Khan's like wait there's still people over there she's like we gotta save who we can and like we gotta go like you know this isn't kid time let's save everybody like you know let's we just gotta save who we can yeah and uh you know and then you just it, it, there's this and like i get cgi in this show this movie was awesome by the way probably because there was a lot probably i don't know it was great like it was really good yeah for, this one and in, in guardians both did very well cgi wise yeah but so the they're have this whole scene of them flying away from this destroyed collapsing city while you see little like you know because the, the scrolls are green people that they're like a green alien race so they stick out like a sore thumb <laughs> And, um, you know, it, uh, they, um, you just see rubble falling on these little green blobs as this fucking rescue ship, as this final rescue ship is flying away. And like, you see it like a giant, like, you know, group of them, like gathering up on the edge of the, what's, what's, what's was their city. Hopefully like, you know, maybe they'll go back and get them. I don't know. You know, it, it, it's, it's, and it's like really, it's a really intense, it's a really intense scene. Yeah. And you appreciate like, well, not you, but I appreciate the fact that like this, this maybe tinted Kamala's view of what being a hero is, but it didn't taint her view of Carol. Yeah. Right. Like, cause, cause you could fall into that trap easily of like her, like, Oh, I thought you were a hero and you just let those people die and having this pointless argument and whatever. And it's like that uh, to me, that's just like low hanging fruit. And it's very annoying. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's like, she's understanding and battling this internally and not blaming her hero for this essentially like she's, yeah she's understanding and well, you know like i think the the shot giving the shots of it like being the visibly visible visually the last ship and like you know them helping as many people on as they can like all right we're when she says like you know, all right we're full go um you know yeah also really the, the other good stuff the other thing we didn't mention which is is pretty important is the runtime of this movie is very short it's an hour and forty, right? Yeah, it's like the shortest Marvel movie, and honestly, like, it. it I wish more it of them does, were like that. <laughs> it does very well with its time. Like, I, it, the I pacing is great, the tone is great. Like, it doesn't waste time doing needless things. Like, I don't know. It's 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 packed full of enjoyable things, in my opinion. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know how much more of the story you want to run through, or you just want to talk about the the, the last stuffs. Uh, well, just to, you know, we're almost at the end of the story. So, and then the, then Captain Marvel's putting two and two together. It's like, oh, like their planet's fucked up. So they're probably going to go get a bunch of water next. And I think I know where they're going to go. Cause there's like a habitable planet. That's like 99.97% water. And that's where like, you know, with the singing people come in, there's a species of people that live there and they can't all, they, they can only talk through singing. So the entire 30 minute sequence is basically just one long musical. And I loved it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cause I'm a, I knew they were you just like, okay, that did, Carol's married. Yeah, Carol is married, and I don't know. I feel like there's a lot more going on there than she says. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm feeling like hey, it know, was she's... just an arrangement. Okay? Yeah, she says, but they do like a really beautiful dance, and like you know, and reintroduce each other, and then she says like, okay, now that I've done like the proper greeting and stuff, um, I, I really need your help. She's, she's like, like yeah, of course. Fucked. She's like, of course. What do you need? And then like you know, he ball, he freaking princes out, and he shows up with his armor and his freaking sword, and he's ready to fight, and he gets into a fight with like you know the villain for a few sequences, and that's pretty pretty cool stuff. And you know, so basically the the scrolls show up to start stealing water, and um, a big battle breaks out, and like you know, there's fighters flying. I thought this whole sequence is really cool. There's yeah. fighters flying everywhere because these people are actually like fighting back, which is something I think that Marvel movies are lacking a little bit in sometimes. Like you know. Uh, so, you know, it's fighters flying everywhere. There's war different warriors fighting in the background and stuff. It's just good stuff all, all around. Um, fantastic stuff. And, uh, you know, but they, they fail to do what the, the, to do the thing, um, for a multitude of reasons and all the heroes blame themselves, but you know, they Captain Marvel's like, all right, I gotta go do it. And I forgot where the mood goes from there. Cause I just remember uh, like, she gets the bangle. She gets, the, no, she gets, the, she gets the second bangle. She, uh, opens up the last portal and then the, no, that's right. She goes as to Earth, right? Okay, sorry, I'm a little confused. Okay, so they they stop. They essentially stop Darben while she's stealing water, and then like they're like, "Oh, she's gonna target." Well, they didn't stop her. She she did it though, right? She was able to. They yeah. were able to start. Yeah, yeah but then she's like brain. gonna target that them and their family or yeah. whatever. So Nick Fury goes and gets Kamala's family, but then Darben doesn't give a fuck. She's like, "I'm just gonna go destroy Saber anyway," and yeah, yeah. and Dar so. 
didn't. Darwin doesn't destroy. Darwin doesn't destroy Saber, right? Like it's the uh, it's this what she's doing to the sun that's destroying it, right? Oh yeah, she's trying to steal Earth's sun. Yeah. yeah, she's trying to steal sun the Earth's sun, and like she starts doing it, and then the space station then starts acting wacky, and then another little fun subplot. So Nick Fury's in here with Saber, and then there's this really cool guy who's like a beard. I think he's an Asgardian, the really tall dude with the beard, oh, African American yeah, fellow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's uh he's a uh, really he 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 was a really good for the background shots. But there's this like cat that has like I don't know it's not a cat. It's a flurkin. It it's a flurkin, okay? But it's like a cat, but it can like and it lays a bunch bur- of eggs apparently. And yeah, it, it lays it gives a bunch birth of eggs to and... like hundreds of flurkin kitties. Flirt yeah, kitties. they're really. But what's happening is the space station is collapsing because uh the sun is getting fucked with, and I guess it like relies on solar energy, you know, to power itself and like stay aloft. Um, their space bridge goes out and they can't fit everybody onto the escape pods. And um, what happens is, is that um, uh, these flurkin, like, I guess they eat organic, like they'll spit you back out eventually if like you're, if they don't like want to kill you or something. I don't, I don't really honestly know how it works. Yeah. Um, but then there's just like, just really funny sequence because like, you know, um, they're trying to calculate how to fix like, you know, the damage she's doing to subspace. So apparently like, you know, they use these warp points to jump around. And uh, she's, like, opening up war points to steal, like, the things from the resources from the other planets. But they're, like, corrupted war points, and they're starting to, like, tear space-time or whatever. <laughs> you know, all that good stuff. Uh-huh. Um, so they, uh, you know, so Spectrum is, like, in her lab solving this. And, you know, and you know they got to get everyone off the space station. There's not enough space pods. So they decide, like, okay, we're going to have these cats go around eating everybody and storing them in their stomachs, and then we'll put all the cats onto the escape pods. And it's just this really amazing five-minute, six-minute sequence of orchestra music playing in the background while zero-G starts to happen and all these kittens are running around eating people. And it's, like, really, really entertaining. Yeah. 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 It's very, it's very then entertaining. Our, then our heroes all fight Darben, defeat her, and then yeah, they, and then well, they don't def- they, they, they give don't her mercy, her and then she's like, "I'm gonna fucking kill you, Kamala! Give me your band!" And then, you know. yeah, and then she overwhelms herself. She breaks, she breaks, or breaks the fabric of reality or yeah. whatever. Tears into um, another and reality, and then, spe- and then Spectrum, you comes like, up with hey, the cool I gotta science. Close it. I got, I got a cool it. science plan, guys. We're gonna fix it using our combined light powers. And also, we're no longer connected. And then Captain Marvel looks a little disappointed for a second. And then, yeah. yeah. And then she uh, but, that also, it, but she has to stay behind because yeah. she's trapped and inside. She seals, you know, Spectrum seals it from the other side. The heroic sacrifice. And, uh, yeah. yeah. And, and Kamala moves Kamala... into her house. <laughs> yep. <laughs> in Louisiana. Yeah. Well, you, know, you won't need this. You won't need this shit anymore. Yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, Captain Marvel's there, too. Yeah. And... So that's that's more or less the movie. And yeah. then, you and then have, there's like, a... this... The mid credit se- the mid credit sequence. Well, there's the a legendary there's mid- a pre credit scene where yeah. Kamala recruits Kate Bishop. Oh, that's right. And so I forgot about that. This is this is setting up for something that they've been setting up for a long time, which is the Young Avengers. Woo 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 woo. Mm. Um, and so for so for people who don't know, I mean, the Young Avengers is you know a bunch of Young Avengers, right? And they and they mention yeah. Cassie as well, Scott Lang's daughter, Cassie Lang. Yeah. Um. So. Other people that maybe could show up in in a in a new event, a young Avengers team, maybe America Chavez from mm. Doctor Strange Two. Uh, I don't think you can get away with doing a young Avengers without some kind of Spider Man. So Tom Holland, Spider Man, he's young. Mm. He could be in the Young Avengers. He's, he'll probably be the leader. Like to be honest. Well, I, I or Kamala will be the leader. But you know, yeah. uh, what's her face? Uh, Iron Heart from Black Panther. Even mm. Shuri as Black Panther. Yep. Um, Ironheart, especially that Mexico is really cool. Yeah, so the, the, there's plenty of uh, excitement to be had around that, and then the actual mid credit scene, um, the thing that got people the most excited, um, where Monica wakes up and she sees her mom. She's mom, oh my god, mom, you're alive, holy shit! And her mom's like, bitch, I don't know who the fuck you is. And, yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't know who you are. Yeah. For all for all the guffawing that we had to do to explain who binary was, binary is is not who binary is. Her mom is binary in in a different universe. Uh, yeah, so no means confirmed yet. Well, until um, one Hank Pym, not Hank Pym, one Hank McCoy, uh, yeah. aka Beast, uh, fully CGI'd, walks in in a lab coat. Uh, yeah mentions the professor you see the x in the background you know it's x-men 
And you know, uh, we're going to have that scene eventually in the next three years where Professor Hulk and Beast are solving some science stuff. Like, you know, we're... I'm a I'm a big fan of this this beast, this kind of beast. Yeah. At first, what I thought was going to happen is I I anticipated X Men. We talked about it. I was wrong in some ways, yeah. right? They they're not here yet. So, but we did see X Men. But they're um, coming. They're coming. But kind of what I anticipated when when she was in the hospital bed. It reminded me of when Wolverine first woke up in the hospital bed at, at uh, you know, with the X-Men um, after they rescued him. And mm-hmm. Jean Grey is over him and she's, you know, taking care of him. And I thought it would kind of mirror that in, in a way, which it didn't. But I, I do appreciate the, the science-y beast here. I, I like that a yeah. lot. Um, and for people who don't know. Is that beast from a specific X-Men that we know that we've watched? I apologize. Yeah, so that's that's what I was going to say is... Um, okay. He's played by Kelsey Grammer, and Kelsey Grammer played Beast in X Men X Two and X Three, the original ones, right? The original Fox X Men movies. So this, uh, to me, would confirm that this is Fox's X Men universe. Yeah. Maybe not because binary is there, but it could be way longer down the line in this universe. Um, so that's what that's what I'm thinking. Like the, the they just kind of probably because that's what they have that's what they have to do because they don't own Fox's stuff. So like you know no, they do, I guess they, they do own Fox's they do, stuff. They but also Fox. like they like what they want to do with like with Star Wars and stuff, you know, or like with uh, Spider Man, where they want to pay homage to that stuff, but also at the same time they don't want to be fully involved in it. Right, right. They don't they don't want to just like extend those stories, right? Yeah. They want to they want to start new with the X Men clearly. Yeah, um, I just think Beast probably just pulls really high. I don't know. That's probably a stupid thing to say, but I feel like Beast is like a really popular X Men character. And in, in addition, he's one to of the original like, X Men. I mean, yeah, you don't want to overdo it. Like, it's it's an easy choice because even yeah. if even if it's not Kelsey you know Grammer, you, right? You it's definitely don't want to have like yeah. yeah it's funny. I, I sorry. I just imagine how this the idea of like that whole scene is completely rewritten to be as dramatic as possible, where Charles Xavier just rolls in like, "Have you ever heard of the X Men?" or something like yeah. that. Yeah, like, I'm glad they didn't go that way. Yeah, Definitely. and so, like, because the character is fully CGI'd here, like, mm. you can easily, like, get away with it not having to be Fox's universe ever, right? Like, mm. even though it's it's Kelsey Grammer voicing him, that doesn't need to matter, right? It could, right? So, if you, if you say, okay, we want to do Scott Summers, but, you know, we're going to, like, it forces you to make the decision. Do I want to recast him, or do I want to bring in James Marsden, or how do I want to do this? And mm-hmm. instead, they can just say, "Well, we don't, we don't want to commit to bringing in any of Fox's X Men here. We're gonna bring in Beast. We'll bring, we'll have the voice act. We'll have the guy who played him in Fox X Men voice him. But that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Um, yeah. And we'll move on like that. And so it leaves things more open than just locking in with, you know, Femke Jansen's Jean Grey or or James Marsden's Cyclops or you know." Patrick Stewart's Professor X, who could be any Professor X because it could be the same actor in every world. We don't know. Um, so, yeah, that's that's just kind of where it is. And it's like, is it Fox's X-Men? Is it not? We don't know at this point, but we can guess. We can guess. So, yeah. And I think that's that's where I hope people don't don't look at this movie and say, oh, people only liked it because of this cameo. Because the truth is, I loved the movie before I ever saw Kate Bishop yeah. or Beast. Same. So. But yeah, I mean, I, you you hit me with the hot take that we didn't talk about. You said it's better than Guardians Three. Yeah, I might take that back now because I thought about, and then I remember the villain from Guardians Three. I was like, oh wait, great, yeah. then all the yeah, then all this other stuff happened, and but it was still a really good movie. Like it, it definitely like better. What was the other Marvel movie that came out this year? Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania. Quantum Mania. Better yeah. than that. Yeah, definitely, definitely better than Quantum Mania, and probably. But what movies came out last year again? <laughs> uh, Black <laughs> Panther. Okay, not two. good, not as good, as, not good as, not as good as Black Panther two, because that was kind of like an event, to be honest with you. Um, um, but still, it's better than most. Mar- I think it's better than some Marvel movies that, that have come out. Like you know, it's better than Iron Man two, better than Iron Man three, obviously. Um, you know, probably. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely better than the first captain marvel as well um, yeah it just leaps and bounds better i'm so glad and like i'm glad that you know that um uh, brie larson was able to bring this character to life in the way that she wanted to in the first movie who just wasn't able to yeah i mean overall it's just it's 
it's a very good movie. Like th- there's nothing really to complain about with it. Yep. Um, and so I, there's some cringe scenes like, you know, where they're a little too campy and there's some fight times when like the fighting sequences, like, you know, break apart, like, you know, but aside from that, yeah, but that's just me like looking under the hood and like sure. looking at certain things, but there's no reason for people to write all these hate articles and be like, Marvel is dying. No, not like, at all. Like, yeah. Yeah. The box office being bad. Well, is, I, is a semi, semi, semi agree. Cause, yeah, cause, oh, yeah, cause of the box office, but also it, like, it's a know. concern, but it's not like it, people need to stop equating box office to quality because there are plenty of great movies that do poor at the box office. And there are plenty mm-hmm. of, terrible movies that do great at the box office like there's no there's no causation there there's nothing to to draw a conclusion from and yeah people who are incels or what hate women or whatever they'll be so happy this movie is terrible and people are realizing marvel is woke and it's not making any money and this is great but anybody who saw the movie why do we give a fuck we just enjoyed a good movie like yeah exactly like dude and it was great too when i walked in that theater it was just me and my row by myself there were no fucking kids yelling and screaming running down the aisle yeah. like i was dead center in the middle on the third and the fourth row third or fourth row up like you know so the perfect prime viewing spot like and i just sat down in this giant luxury folding chair that like you know because that that tracy theater they have like nice chairs mm. um and i just watched the movie and oh my god it was so fucking good oh my god that the, i think that's why i made like these maybe my my experience is biased because i had such a good time in the theater but you know I had my bunch of crunch, I had my popcorn, and I had my Coke. So yeah. that's all I need. Yeah. And so, oh, it's just a great, a great viewing experience. And I hope more people do see the movie at some point because it's a lot to enjoy there. Um, yep. And again, yeah. like, you nope. don't often go into comment sections and see people saying positive things. But like literally every comment I saw was like, oh, I was so surprised by how much I liked this See, movie. That's what I'm. That's what I'm seeing too. Like I feel like the like the nerds are threatened. Like you know, <laughs> like the dorks are threatened. Like because the people are going. To, people are actually standing up for this movie. It's like damn, they were like I saw this. Like I I went to the you know they have like a Marvel subreddit and I went into it and like the whole the whole thread was just like I went and saw this movie and it was like really good. What the hell is wrong with people? And yeah. what people on Reddit say is well they they say it's fatigue. I kind of agree, but no, you know, maybe there's definitely a huge part of of it is fatigue. Um, yeah, and unless it's but, like a major event, right? Like like No Way Home was, or like um, like the Avengers movies, like people aren't necessarily yeah. gonna. What is the next big event while we're here? You well, know I mean, what it is off the top of your head? It's it's well, then it's not a big event, but then the next movie coming out for Marvel is gonna be a huge one. It's Deadpool three, right? Like, oh. That that to me it's 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 an event because it's he's entering the MCU right yeah and, and I wonder what they're gonna do like I wonder if they're gonna go I wonder if they're just gonna go completely unhinged yeah they will they will yeah um other than that I mean it's gonna be uh, Avengers five which is supposed to be the King Dynasty but now maybe something different mm-hmm. also we didn't talk about this with Loki but uh, for people who who are familiar with comics he seems to be similar to the character of Beyonder. Which does have huge, imp- in, uh, huge impact. I don't know. Implications. I, yeah, huge implications on uh, on Secret Wars. So. Oh, so you so that's who you think Loki became? Because like again, like he obviously changed but... when he sat down in that when he sat down in that chair. Like you know, I I, I didn't know. And this is the thing about Captain Mar- about the Marvels, like in and Loki in particular, like that scene of him sitting. I feel like they're finally getting the idea that they should make comic book stills, like full page spread comic book stills, like that they draw sometimes oh, yeah. that are amazing, oh, yeah. and like and ma- and make them into movie shots because that's what they did. Like you know when Captain Marvel like flew out of her ship like backwards and there was a sun in her sprawling hair, that made me think of like a comic book, like a oh, full yeah. page spread. I forgot she also re reignited the sun of the planet. Oh yeah, planet. she said, and she saved everybody, and everyone lived happily ever after. The end. <laughs> that's yeah. how the, that's how the Marvels ended, basically. Um, yeah. So, but I'm I'm happy with it. I don't I don't care really what people have to say. Um, same. So, like same. Like that movie. That movie was not as bad as they said, and they're just angry because it had a bunch of women well, in it. And to be honest bad. with you, it's not bad in any I, way. <laughs> yeah, and like you know, like they're just angry. But to be honest with you, like you know, like I'm like these chicks are hot. <laughs> you know. All of these chicks are hot running around in these skin tight outfits, like doing backflips and stuff, except for Kamal Khan because she was 16 years old. Of course, you know, I'm put myself distance from that right now. Uh, but damn, dude, like these other chicks are hot. Great. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Well, 
uh yeah we got through everything we needed to here so hey look at us look at us yep um but yeah i hope everybody enjoyed you can always share your thoughts uh whenever we're live we're live uh, usually every wednesday like 5 30 p.m pst but uh we had to do thursday because i went to a concert last night so mm. um yeah uh, so whenever we're here live if you're watching you can type in chat and ask questions and we'll read them out and talk to you uh and if not if you're listening uh on a podcast you can Rate, write a review and rate us and whatever you can leave some questions wherever uh, and we'll talk about those as well uh, you can follow like subscribe whatever uh, whatever platform you're on you can watch us on youtube as well we're not live on youtube but the video will be up there and you can subscribe and leave a comment and tell us we suck or something um and yeah yep. that's it always on the always on the eternal quest for hate mail yeah anyway much love we'll see you guys next time peace out goodbye yeah